Today I am talking about the risks that emerge in today's practices for pricing both collateralized and uncollateralized derivatives. Well, basically there is a model risk in both cases. In case of uh, non-collateralized derivatives, it uh, erases uh, from uh, uh, FVA, funding value adjustment. This created so much debate uh, because it breaks down some symmetries we are used to in finance. For example, it breaks down the symmetry between what is fair for the bank and what is fair for the counterparty. It breaks down the symmetry between what is a price computed as an expectation of cash flows and what is a price computed as a cost of a replication. It even breaks down the symmetry between what is fair for the shareholder and what is fair for the company itself. Obviously, uh, depending on the position you take in looking at funding value adjustment, you find a different number and each one of these numbers actually involves a different risk, either the risk of letting the bank without the necessary liquidity or letting the bank out of the market. But there is an issue also related to collateralized derivatives and it is about what we mean today by a risk-free rate and a risk-free deal. Now there are some approaches that treat collateralized derivatives as risk-free deals, but at the same time they assume that the discounting rate used for them is a non-risk-free rate. That would be an arbitrage, and arbitrages like that do not last in the market. Just in the last few weeks we have seen a, a total reverse of the relationship between forwards and futures, between of the new collateralization needs for forwards. Well, essentially, the market often realizes this sort of arbitrages before models do. Well, essentially, there are two risks associated to modeling. The first risk is the risk of doing something at odds with what our counterparties or what the rest of the market is doing. This is usually the risk that emerges first. The other risk, probably the most important, is the risk of being at odds with the underlying fundamentals. But this risk emerges only in a longer run, usually. Managing model risk means setting up provisions that control the losses we can have in case our model turns out to be wrong. And a prerequisite for that is understanding all the different modeling alternatives that we've got and what are their weak and strong points. Just looking for the right model is, is not a way to, to deal with model risk. Well, I think that nowadays regulators on this are on the right track. They have understood that uh, funding is not a part of fair value and no matter what is the technical definition of fair value in accounting, it's quite clear that it is not fair to charge our credit costs to our weaker counterparties. On the other hand, the funding value adjustment is a cost that bank must cover somehow as part of what regulators call now prudential value. Today I'm heading uh, uh, here at Risk Minds uh, a panel with John Hall and the head of the CVA desk at my bank and we're going to see what this means in practice. So people at Risk Minds will see uh, and learn a lot of interesting things about that today. Coming to the second part of your question, of course banks need a desk specialized in computing and managing FVA. But in my opinion this should not be separated from the desk that deals with CVA and DVA and the desk that deals with capital charges. Because the three things are interconnected and dealing with them separately is at high risk of double count. Well, nowadays risk managers are very busy in dealing formally with regulations and that can be a problem because no one is now really thinking of what the new model risks are or where the bubbles are. You know? While I believe that risk managers nowadays should find the right way to deal with the asymmetric world we have in front of us, a world where, for example, uh, knowing the price of a deal may mean nothing if you don't know what is the portfolio of the different banks. This may arise for uncollateralized derivatives because of CVA, FVA, wrong way risk and uh, netting. And this may also arise for cleared derivatives, for example, because the initial margin that affects pricing will depend on the portfolio of the bank. I think that uh, a new approach is required to deal with this new world.
Well, to start with a joke, uh, I think that in five years' time, financial market will be a long way east of what they are today. Uh, the less developed and uh, fast-growing banks of the East uh, may not need all the regulators we are putting in place. We are going to see the consequences of that. In the West, uh, we are making the financial market uh, under some points of view more transparent and under some other points of view more obscure because uh, uh, regulations will drive business and pricing, creating distortions and unexpected consequences that regulators uh, are not really anticipating. Of course, regulations are useful and banks today need more liquidity and more capital, but setting too many former rules creates a moral hazard. When the, the former rule is fulfilled, one stops uh, uh, thinking of the real risk, and this is very dangerous and may create bubbles and bursts uh, that we are not anticipating. Probably the risk we have just uh, talked about, uh, and particularly some new unexpected risks that may arise from new regulations.